Control of Social Barcelona. She's coming from uh, Salvador, Bahia, in Brazil. Flora graduated at the University of Bahia, in, and also she got the, uh, her first master in physics. And then she moved to here, to, to Mallorca, for her PhD. I have the honor to be her thesis advisor uh, during, from 2006 to 2010, if I remember properly. So she got the PhD in 2010. Then, and then she returned back to, to Brazil, where she got a permanent position as an associate professor, professor at the physics department of the Federal University of Bahia. And, and now she's visiting us for nearly one year, or now it's not one year. Yeah. Uh, she, her work has been always seen at the interface between physics and, uh, and biology. And today she, she will spend some, some mathematical modeling of cancer there. Thank you. I have to say that the pleasure was mine to work with you, Emilio, on the other side. And it's a great pleasure to be here again and stay one year in this, it's like a dream. <laughs> and today I presented a, a work I've done with uh, Roberto Andrade, uh, Herb Friedman, and <coughs> But before, I will present a little bit um, the university and the state I came from. Uh, at you can see here the map of Brazil, and in red we have the state of Bahia. It's a, a big state. It's a, a little bit bigger than whole Spain. <laughs> and then in, the, in this state we have four different universities. We have the Federal University of Bahia that is in red here, and we have the FOB that is the Federal University of Reconca. Is this part of Bahia. And this one appears um, split of the Cruz das Almas campus of Federal University of Bahia and then appears this new one. And this in uh, yellow is the uh, Federal University of uh, West of Bahia. And then this campus in dark yellow was uh, at the beginning in the University Federal of Bahia as well. And then, so University Federal of Bahia splits into two different federal universities. And then we have this different one, this is the uh, Federal University of Valle de São Francisco, that is a part that is localized in Bahia. This university is localized in, t in three different states of Brazil, Piauí, and uh, Pernambuco, and Bahia. And then we have this part that is localized in Bahia. So this is a, a nice view of Salvador, that is the capital of Bahia. And here is the Atlantic Ocean, and this is the Bay of the Old Sands. Actually, Salvador, the full name of Salvador is São Salvador, the Bahia de Todos os Santos. That means the Holy Savior of the Bay of the Old Sands. But we normally call Salvador. And here is the... Uh, the, the extreme on that divide this bay and the, the ocean. And uh, in Bahia, we have around 2 million of people. And in Salvador, we are around 3 million of people, a lot of Bahians there. And this is a picture of the entrance of the Federal University of Bahia. We have 32 units and 112 graduations, different graduations, and we have around 146 post-graduations around all the, the courses. And we have around 32,000 of students matriculated there. And this is a picture of uh, our institute. It's not so beautiful. <laughs> Emilio uh, could, uh, came last year to visit us, and we are still in some building work there, and that is a little bit disorganized these days because we are growing. And we have three different departments. I'm part of this general physics. And we have these different groups of research there. And then I'm here in statistical physics and complex systems. And we have some labs, the optical properties laboratory and laboratory of photos as well. And this is just a, a review of our group. Just, I, I don't want to bore you disturb you with these things. 
and we have a disordered system, a periodic and long range. We, tr we work with complex network, biological physics, and biomedicine. Uh, we have a uh, raw surface and application to the oil properties and study. We have um, some projects with Petrobras in Brazil. And we have a, a sequence replacement and genomic, and we have in proteomic here. And then we have the, this new area, <coughs> that, uh, Jose Garcia. You know, this view is within neuroscience, and we have a student here, Rafael. So you go. Working here with Pedro Montoya. Yes, it's a collaboration in neuroscience between our group and uh, we. Okay. The, this work. Uh, it's a little bit different what I have done here at FISC. Here I, I work with ecological problems, but before I came here, I started to study some medical problems. The first problem with was with a problem in the evolution of SIDA, uh, AIDS, and then we, uh, we could uh, represent how is the, the whole process of uh, the evolution of AIDS without treatment. And in this work, we treat um, the two combined therapies to explain the efficiency or improve the treatment when we uh, work with cancer. So the stages of cancer that is called carcinogenesis or oncogenesis or tumor genesis is the formation of cancer, whereby normal cells are transformed into cancer cells. So. This uh, process is characterized by a progression of changes at genetic, cellular, and epigenetic level. And thereby, there is a repetition of a cells to undergo um, uncontrolled changes that form a malignant uh, mass. So from this, we have a malignant cells that appear and then proliferate to the mani uh, a malignant mass. And when it's up to one to two millimeters, it induces some substance that is called TAF that stimulates the proliferation of new endothelial cells. So the endothelial cells are the cells that are going to bring to cancer nutrition, nutrients. And then it is important too because it's the vehicle that transports in the process of metastasis in which the cancer is spread around. around So the <coughs> angiogenesis is not only the process that occurs during cancer, but occurs um, during embryogenesis and tissue repairs, for example, in some diseases like arthritis and solid tumor. Our model is based on solid tumor because we would like to explain how angiogenesis can favor cancer and how combined treatments that attack not only the cancer cells, but endothelial cells as well. Can improve the treatment, avoid the recurrence of cancer. This is the basic idea of this work. Uh, in cancer, there, is, there are several kinds, different kinds of treatments. Rather, uh, this maximum tolerated dose is the most common treatment in which you, uh, we apply a maximum dose of chemo drug, and then we have to take a long rest in order to body recovery. But this can be efficient to kill the cancer cell, but sometimes when the, some cells become drug resistant, the cancer can appear again. And this kind of treatment is not efficient to avoid, avoid this recurrence of cancer. Then, in 2000, uh, two researchers, I don't remember, Eli and um, I forget the other name, they proposed a, not, a different kind of treatment that is called the metronomic chemotherapy. Then we use this antiangiogenic schedule of cancer agents. I mean, the cancer chemo agent only attack cancer cells. Once it reduces the cancer cell, it diminishes the embryogenesis or the angiogenesis, that is the process of formation of new vessels that supply cancer with nutrients. Indirectly, it will reduce. That's why it's called anti-angiogenic, although it's not attacked directly 
endothelial cells. And this, uh, when you use the metronomic chemotherapy, we can apply at low doses, and generally, we use set different several kinds of uh, chemo agents. So, uh, the mathematical modeling of cancer, there are several ways to modeling uh, cancer. We have interbrain models, for example, uh, that model micro scales to ma uh, micro to macro, and it leads to a mode scale modeling. But here, we are considering only a single scale. We use all the uh, ordinary differential equation to model, and we consider cancer cells, normal cells, and the endothelial cells. And as I said before, our purpose is to explain how both therapies can eliminate the cancer in the body. We based it on our work in this experimental data that was published in 2001 in Browder uh, and collaborators. And here he made in his group applied to mice uh, an experiment, when they use a conventional schedule, they can't eliminate uh, the cancer in the mice. In the case when the, the cells are resistant to the drug. But if they use the metronomic schedule, what I mean, the anti-angiogenic schedule, they can reduce but not eliminate this one. But the idea here is to use the same method and then add the anti-angiogenic drug that is different from the chemo drugs. And then, together, these two can eliminate and avoid the appearance of cancer. And this is the idea of the work we uh, model. And here, uh, it's the same, but applying to just sensitive cells to the drug. So, use a conventional schedule, cannot eliminate the, the cancer, but when use only the metronomic without anti-angiogenic drug, the, the, the cancer. So the idea here is use the metronomic, the metronomic uh, schedule together with anti-angiogenic. So this is the model. We have five uh, different uh, equations. So at, at in the previous model that it was published by my collaborator, we consider the competition between normal cells and cancer cells for nutrients. And we consider the action of chemo agent as a predation, use holotype 2 as a predation. And we consider that the normal cells and cancer cells are saturated, has, have saturated growth rates, as you can see here. And we consider that endothelial cells will increase the carrying capacity of uh, cancer cells. So in this way, we really relate these two. The, the first one is normal cells. Here is cancer cells and endothelial cells. So endothelial cells, population increases the carrying capacity, like I said before, of cells. And it is affected by both the predation of anti-angiogenic and the net result of chemo factors produced, produced by cancer cells. This is an indirect <coughs> effect in the model. And it is regulated by the net result of chemo factors produced by, uh, again, by the normal cells LS, as well as by much slower natural growth rate. So here, uh, as I said before, we use the metronomic approximation of the metronomic schedule. I mean, we use a continuous infusion rate. The metronomic use are very continuous, not continuous because the patient is not all the time receiving the drug, but day by day, and then it is what we approximate as a continuous infusion, and, uh, and assume both tra treatments, so, uh, cancer and anti-angiogenic, this one. And then they increase with this infusion, decrease with the interaction between these three cells. So the anti-angiogenic if is found to improve of chemo agent when you combine these two, since it destroys the sex excess of endothelial cells, normalizing the tumor vasculature. 
So, when you introduce antiogenic in the model, it reduces the endothelial cells. And then we reduce as well the nutrients that go to the, the cancer cell. Although the endothelial cells facilitate the, the, the chemo to arrive to the cells, the dispositive effect is bad, bad, better than the negative one. I mean, reducing the endothelial cells is better than the worst because we re reduce the nutrients, but reduce the chemo as well. But the chemo is more efficient in this way. Um, chemo agent acts as predator, as I said before, and also decreases due to its actions on the cells according to the similar functions. And then here, together with the action of chemo agents that acts only on normal and cancer cells, we put together the action, the action of endothelial cells and antiogenic uh, treatment. So these are the parameters. Basically, we are work together with uh, the, the infusion of cancer cells, and uh, it's not here the P22, that is the efficiency of antiogenic treatment. So this we work we have worked with the normalized model, so we made this parameter transformations, and we prove that our model is bounded and dissipative. And in order to, to, uh, to prove that our model without treatment goes to cancer, we postulate the cancer hypothesis. So when you don't apply the treatments, both of them, we guarantee that our model goes directly to the cancer state. So in this, we constrain these two parameters in order to have this solution stable, as a stable state of our system. <laughs> so, uh, the first analytical result is when we work without the entire uh, no chemotherapy treatment and we see that when we have only antiangiogenic treatment, the, this treatment only cannot eliminate the cancer. So the cure state is not a possible stable state as the system when you have only antiogenic treatment. This is uh, what we find exper experimentally and we can reproduce with our model. But when you use in a subspace when you have uh, no antiogenic, we can treat different states. We can have the cure states. When you apply only the chemotherapy, we can cure the, the cancer, eliminate the cancer. When we have the cancer state and we have internal state have both normal cells and cancer cells. In order to study the combined therapies, we focus in the state that we have endothelial cells different from zero, so we have endothelial cells, and we focus on the cure state. <coughs> so this is the, the three possibilities of the states, and depends on the relationship of the parameters that are related to the treatment and related to the growth of normal cells, we have these three different states. And we guarantee that consider the subspace when we don't have antiogenic and the positive plan. If we have the growth rate of uh, normal cells, there is no trivial closed orbit solution in the positive of the octans. So when we don't have uh, cure state, but we don't have uh, the cure state is not stable, but we don't have uh, a opt solution as well. So, as I said before, uh, we prove mathematically that when we have the chemotherapy and antiogenic leads to a reversal outcome in which cancer cell, it's not able to eliminate the cancer cell. These are the the two eigenvalues of the cancer, the cure state, when we have an eigenvalue that is negative for the cure, uh, for the uh, only chemo treatment, this becomes unstable. It's not, it's not um, 
it's positive for a cure state. When you combine both therapies, it becomes negative. What I mean, it is a stable solution. So this is the graph during this time evolution when we have no anti-angiogenic sub-model and then we have a state that we have an uh, internal state and then when at the same parameters used here only adding the, the anti-angiogenic in this uh, plot we have that the cancer cells is, uh, are eliminated uh, in the system and then we have the, the cure state. These are the parameters, some parameters are based on some experimental data and someone use the uh, cancer hypothesis. And then we perform uh, some bifurcation diagram. Here we, we have the direct evolution and we increase the infusion dose of chemo. So at low doses of chemotherapy, we have a cancer state, then uh, increasing we have the internal state and then the cure state. What is interesting here is when we uh, work with the full model at the antiogenic, this transition to cure state appears before, uh, before the, when we have only chemotherapy only. Then the idea is when combining these two treatments, we can reduce the dose of chemo uh, in the patient, avoid the toxicity of these drugs. Delta, delta is the chemo infusion. If you uh, see here the here, this is the chemo treatment equation. This is the, the infusion rate that is continued for the chemo treatment. So uh, in this way, we can reduce the, the, the dose of infusion rate in order to have cure state. And the antiogenic is not toxic to the body. So in this way you can, uh, here you can see, we can work with these two parameters, the chemo agent and the efficiency of antiogenic. This, this parameter is related to efficiency of antiogenic. If we, we can find some drug that is more efficient in the antiogenic fat effect, we can reduce the infusion of the chemo agent. So, uh, finally, it's not possible to eliminate the cancer cells by antiogenic therapy alone. If the cancer cells cannot be eliminated by chemotherapy alone, a reverse of outcome may be attained by combining simultaneously chemotherapy and antiogenic therapy, as was pointed out in some experiments in mice. And the co-administration of chemo and antiogenic agents is able to promote a larger reduction of tumor then is the chemotherapy alone. So in the, it's the next step we thought to consider a time delay in the, applying the chemotherapy and to see the growth the when uh, the malignant mass is growing, it starts send signaling uh, substances that activate the endothelial cells growth. And then this is a time delay. There are a time delay between these two processes. And when we add a time delay in the model, this is not exactly the model in this work, but it's, it was a preview version of our model. We have to check if it's happened with our model. Is we have a cancer state here, and then for a certain period of time, the cancer appears again. It's a recurrent state. So we have a uh, cancer state solution here. But for during a certain period of time, the cancer was almost eliminated and then appears again. And for this, uh, the same um, parameters here, just adding antiogenic, we can eliminate the cancer. So this is the, the idea of the, this work. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it makes it easier to have a... I mean, 
my question is not so much about the model. Uh, is it an expected the feature of the of the system? I mean, the I don't know. When adding or? the time delay and other things will appear. Mm. So it's, it's a different model, but uh, without time delay, we guarantee that it does not appear. But in patients, I mean, are there observations that are in the treatment and so on that there can be periodic oscillations? You know, do you know about that? I don't know. What I know by experience, not, I didn't have cancer, but many uh, in study or in the close people, what happened is once we have cancer and we the traditional treatment eliminates the cancer. And as I showed here in this graph, uh, it can happen for a long period of time, 10, 20 years, for example, the, the person could be without cancer and then the cancer appears again. So there is no enough time in life to have the oscillation in cancer because the treatment is very aggressive to the body. People take the, the treatment and then, okay, it's, there is no cancer. And then cancer can appear again and start a new treatment. And then most time people cannot resist I might have missed the point. Uh, where does this model come from? Is, is that uh, based on ad hoc assumptions, or is this, for example, also proved from the MICE model? Yeah, the inspiration was through the MICE model, not, not model, because it was an experiment. It's well, a medical, yes. uh, yeah, medical term. Uh, term, uh, term. term well. And we tried to translate it in the, in the mathematical model. But my collaborators, um, used to work with several different models of cancer. They have experience in that. And the previous model, they explained the cancer with metastasis. So this model we based some assumption that they had in the previous model and took as a base of model. But we changed a lot the, the assumption because when we added these two treatments, we took some uh, considerations uh, in the model that they had, they had, they don't have. Can you compare the experiments with mice? Do you have access to all the different variables? Qualitative, yes. Qualitative, yes. Is it only specific to a certain type of cancer? Or? Solid. Solid cancer. Okay. Any type of solid cancer. In mice, it was a lung cancer. But in, in, in a cancer that has uh, a geogenesis process and it is solid cancer, uh, yes, yeah, so, um, these days, um, one, I don't remember from what uh, uh, a researcher wrote, wrote me in order to validate this model with data. It's, it's a, a great. Because this, um, I don't, I'm not sure if this treatment is used in human up to now. There are several combined treatments, for example, radiotherapy and chemotherapy and combined with surgery. But entire geogenic in uh, this way, I don't know, I'm not sure now if it's used in the new up to now. Yes, I would like to ask what you think would change in your political results if you include this space so instead of using the modern music, you use a PDA to look transport across. Especially for big tumors. Right? Yeah, it's a good idea. Actually, we start working not with this combined model, but with radio, uh, chemo, uh, radiotherapy. That it's very important the regions in which it's applied. You have to consider with where, which region has oxygen or not. But in this case, I'm not sure because the, the treatment doesn't attack a specific region, but the, the, all the cells. The endothelial cells that, that are the vessels, and the chemo that attacks the, all the cells that has a high growth rate, and the cancer cells as well. But you can try. Uh, do you find parameter regions where you have multi stability also between, for example, the cancerous state and the non cancerous state? So is it reliable that, for example, the, the cancer disappears in this angiogenic? 
angiogenic in no with our model it's not possible to eliminate the cancer. Or with using only a diagen. We don't find. We didn't find it. And also no multi stability. Mm -hmm. Like you have different different state of solutions. It's yeah, it's different state of solution, but this is not a possible state in the in the model. In the case of to the, to combine all the possibilities appears, and the stability, stability of this uh, depends on the parameters. But in the case of uh, thiogeogenic, it's not a possible. More questions? Comments? I don't know when, when you have such a very small, small populations of cells, uh, probably you have to take into account that, that not all cells are equal, but there is some stochastic effects that show some variability. Yeah. Uh, if I can do previous work on the HIV values, to this yeah, was important. Sure. Is yeah, this, uh, yeah. so to, there are you some. Like to put noise or to put some no. stochastic? There are some there? studies that uh, consider they stem uh, cancer cells. What? Stem cellular stroma. Stem cell. Because um, when you eliminate the cancer, and you make the exam to see if there is cancer or not. There is no detection when you have stem cancer cells. That is, could be an explanation to a recurrence of cancer. So in this way, we add in the model the <coughs> possibility of cells. So we eliminate, we eliminate the cancer, but don't eliminate the stem cancer cell. That it, sometimes it's not detectable by itself. And then it could appear. But in this, in this case, Previous model, it's only the normal cells that it's at low um, biomass and then appears again. But it could appear. Any other question or comment? <laughs>